Lance Stroll sucks. Nah, he doesn't. I just wanted to set a new record. Because this guy is a running gag on this channel. There are a lot of people who think that he shouldn't be on the Formula 1 grid. And whilst I think he has got some talent, I don't think it's enough for him to be on the grid with some of the best drivers in the world. It sounds a bit rich coming from a guy who draws his own head, but it's just my opinion. So then, if I don't think that Stroll's fit for Formula 1, who is? For me, that's an easy question to answer. Nick Cassidy. Now, if your reaction to that was... Who? My guess is that you probably don't know much about motorsport, which is fine, not here to judge, just here to inform and entertain and show off my crudely drawn animation. So why do I think that Nick Cassidy should be in Formula 1? Well, when you look at Nick Cassidy's racing record, you'd start to understand why people hold this guy to a high regard. Early successes include two Toyota Racing Series championships, as well as three New Zealand Grand Prix victories. On its own, that's an impressive statistic. He did various championships in and around Europe which didn't really amount to much, but where Cassidy found consistent considerable success, and still does to this day, was in Japan. His first venture in the land of hemp was on the Japanese Formula 3 Championship in 2015, competing against the likes of Kenta Yamashita and Nidei Fukuzumi. So it wouldn't be an easy ride for him. Nevertheless, Cassidy achieved six wins throughout the season, the most of anybody, and won the title at the final round in Sugo in what was a dominant display. But hey, that's just Japanese Formula 3, so what you may say? Alright, alright, well, the following year, Cassidy would sign up with the Tom's Super GT team, driving the number 36 Lexus alongside Daisuke Ito. The pair had a decent outing, finishing 5th and ahead of their teammates, and this performance led Cassidy to being retained for the following year with the Tom's team, but this time with Ryo Hidekawa. In a championship that went down to the final round in Motegi, Cassidy and Hidekawa won the Super GT title by 2 points over the Nissan pairing of Sukio Matsuda and Ronnie Quintarelli. In 2018 and 2019, Cassidy and Hidekawa would finish 2nd in the championship which, considering the strength of the competition, is very impressive. Consistency and pace throughout these three years of racing is impressive enough, but it was Cassidy's efforts in Super Formula that demonstrates why he is a potential Formula 1 star. It's kind of basically the Japanese Formula 2. Like, that's in a very, very basic sense. It is one of the premier open-wheel racing championships in the world outside of Formula 1. The competition in the series is fierce, and arguably more competitive than that of the FIA Formula 2 championship, which if you judge by last year's grid, wasn't so hard because I mean we had uh but anyway in Cassidy's first season of Super Formula his competitors included Felix Rosenqvist, Pierre Gasly, Komai Kobayashi, Naoki Yamamoto, Jan Manbra, Andrea Lotterer, Kazuki Nakajima and Narayan Karthikeyan. Okay, I, I admit, that last one was a bit of a bad example, but you, you get what I mean. Cassidy's first season was relatively quiet, with only one pole position and one podium, but nevertheless, he outpaced his teammate Kenta Yamashita, who was no bloody slouch. Remaining with Kondo Racing for the 2018 season, Cassidy had a constant presence at the front of the field, with a dominant display at Fuji being the highlight of the season. Heading into the final round at Suzuka, Cassidy was leading the championship over Yamamoto by four points. With points awarded to pole winners, and added points in the final round of the championship, the stakes were high. Unfortunately for Cassidy, Yamamoto demonstrated his prowess around the Suzuka circuit, winning the championship by one point over Cassidy. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but he did demonstrate he had something. For Cassidy, the Super Formula title was something he dearly wanted, and 2019 would be his best chance yet. This time, driving for the Toms team alongside former Williams F1 driver Kazuki Nakajima. Cassidy's season started off pretty well. I mean, he won at Suzuka in the opening round. Though the next two rounds were a little bit average, but not quite as average as Dan Tictum's short time in the category. He would achieve podiums in the following rounds in Fuji and Moltegi before finishing outside the points in Okayama. And then came the finale. Now the 2019 Super Formula finale was a special race for me because I was there. Suzuka is a circuit that you have to see to believe. You have to go to the circuit to understand just what an amazing track it is, even if half the circuit is infested with dragonflies. Cassidy qualified in sixth place, down from his championship rivals and in danger of losing the championship all over again. But that day, Cassidy drove the race of his life. Cassidy scythed through the field, passing twice down at the hairpin. As the race settled down, Cassidy was sitting pretty behind Tomoki Nojiri, who was leading the field. But since Nojiri didn't really pose any threat to the championship, all Cassidy had to do now was nurse the car home. Cassidy crossed the line to win the Super Formula Championship. Watching that race confirmed in my mind that Cassidy was worthy of an F1 seat. And to 
to top it all off, he dominated the Formula E testing at Marrakesh earlier this year. He's already committed to the Super Formula and Super GT Championships for 2020, but really, why isn't this guy in Formula 1? And before you say, Manny, are you seriously suggesting to me that there aren't academies out there who would be willing to take him on? Here we have a driver that has demonstrated his ability over the past three years alone. Before that, he won Formula 3 Championships and multiple Grand Prix. Some of you may scoff and say that this walking bag of hair product has achieved just as much. While he certainly has achieved a lot, he also had quite a bit of help through his father's wallet if we're totally honest here. And while there are some drivers out there that do warrant a mention outside of this, Cassidy is nonetheless someone who is deserving of a chance on the world stage.